Hello, welcome. My name is Kyle Pereira. I'm a product manager here at BCN3D. Thank you for taking the time to join us today where we're going to talk about the BCN3D Epsilon series. And to help talk about this topic, I also have here my colleague Diego. Yeah. Hi, Kyle. How are you doing? So, yes, uh, my name is Diego Prado, lead product manager in BCN3D. So, yeah, as you can imagine, there is a very good representation of the product department uh, uh, in, this, in this webinar. So it would be nice, Kyle, if we continue talking about the new uh, Epsilon series. And I think it's good that you talk uh, more about the application. And I think I can help you uh, when talking about the feature for this product. Sure. And so, like I mentioned, we're going to cover the BCN 3D Epsilon series made for the workbench. Why it was created, what applications it was designed for, and also what features it has to support those applications. But before we get into that, I want to talk about the term workbench, because we say workbench a lot, especially internally. But what do we, what do we mean by that? Hmm. Yes, indeed, that's a very good question. And actually, that was a question that uh, we received a lot from our customers when we released uh, the uh, Epsilon in 2019. Uh, because, yeah, of course, it was a term that was not uh, very uh, widely used, but it was something that we found out very interesting internally because we found out that there is a really big gap between the well-known desktop and industry, uh, industrial uh, environments. So uh, at that point, we were talking also with a lot of companies and they needed some uh, features, uh, mostly when talking about safety. So those are specific features, but sometimes they didn't need uh, these uh, extra industrial grade features. So that's why we decided to fill this gap. And uh, yeah, so to make a really short explanation about what Workbench is, uh, I would say that Workbench is in between desktop and industrial, and it is what you will imagine a workshop to be like. So uh, it is an environment in which you uh, or a company will have uh, small machines or routine equipment, equipment and, and things like that. So uh, that's why we think is better to, to have uh, some printers in that gap because we know that there are a lot of uh, companies in this in this segment. So uh, for us, uh, releasing a new set of products uh, in the Warbands was a very good decision, I think. And then uh, here we are presenting the Epsilon W50SC and the new Epsilon W27SC. Yeah, so it seems like customers are discovering new opportunities to expand additive manu manufacturing beyond just the early design phase. They're ready to go past printing design prototypes with standard materials, and they're looking to add more value into their manufacturing line, into their supply chain, but also their products. And they're focusing on certain applications to help get them there. Yeah, I think that is very interesting because we have seen that uh, more and more companies are now using FFF printing uh, for more than prototyping. So they are exploring more and more applications. So it would be nice, Kyle, that you are uh, an expert on this, that you can get more into these uh, applications while I can help you a little bit more explaining the feature of our products. Yeah, sure. Let's do it in front of the printers. Yeah, I think it's actually a good idea. Okay. Let's go. And so here we have the BCN3D Epsilon W50SC and the Epsilon W27SC. And so one application that customers pursue with the Epsilon series is low volume production. If a company is aiming for short production runs, usually it's much more cost effective to do so with 3D printing than investing in the typically expensive tooling with high volume manufacturing. So with low volume production, I think that Epsilon's strongest claim is the fact that it has IDEX, two separate tool heads. So you can print twice the amount of parts in the same amount of time. And that can be left and right-handed parts, mirrored components, or multiples of those on the build plate using the special IDEX mirror mode, or even identical, compart uh, identical parts or multiples of those using IDEX's special duplication mode. I think that that's uh, Epsilon's uh, strongest advantage when working with low volume production. Yeah, I totally agree, Kyle. But I think together with the IDEX technology, it's very important that uh, our new printers uh, have a really wide surface. So in this case, uh, we have uh, the same footprint, 420 millimeters in the X axis and 300 millimeters in the Y axis. So uh, playing together with the IDEX technology or with the mirror or duplication modes, you can print a lot of parts per cycle. 
So something that is also important for uh, the, this application, the low volume production, is that uh, it depends on the material uh, the customer wants to print uh, these parts with. So we have in BCN 3D a really wide portfolio of materials. Uh, all of them developed uh, together with uh, our partners, BASF and Mitsubishi Chemical. And of course, we are working to have even more materials in the future. But we keep also using the open filament system. That means that uh, any other third party materials can be loaded into our printers and you can print with these materials as well. Uh, and that will be very straightforward, both with our materials or with the third party materials. You will open BCN 3D Cura, select a material, select the right profile that is in there, then just slice uh, and then send it over the network. Uh, and of course, because we have the BCN 3D Cloud Dashboard, you can check the status uh, at all times. But uh, having good profiles is not enough to print with these materials because there are materials that are quite uh, picky when printing with them, right? Uh, they need special conditions. So that's why we have uh, our smart cabinet. And in our smart cabinet, we have a controlled environment in here where you can store uh, several spools and then you can uh, always have them in good conditions while, while printing. So this chamber will keep the materials always with a humidity control uh, below the 40%. And that's important because some of these materials are hygroscopic. They tend to absorb moisture, though how severely they do so depends on the material. Like you were mentioning, polyamide, nylon-based materials are very well known for having this issue. Uh, PVA, a very common dissolvable support, is also affected by humidity. And even print quality in TPU gets affected by moisture. So correctly storing these materials is a must to ensure the best possible part quality on your final parts. And that's why with the smart cabinet, you can store multiple rolls of filament in a dehumidified environment, and you can print from that same environment as well, which increases repeatability, and you get consistently good parts. Now, another big requirement with low volume production is productivity. You want to create as many parts as possible in the shortest amount of time. But there are occasions when power failures occur in the workshop, and you can lose several printing hours, or days even, depending on the, on the print job. And that's unacceptable in these types of environments. So can you please share with everyone my favorite feature of the smart cabinet? Of course, Kyle. So yeah, as you mentioned, productivity is one of the most important uh, uh, requirements uh, for these printers. Uh, mentioning that the, those printers will be on the workbench is, is, is uh, more, very important. So uh, in this case, the smart cabinet includes an interruptible power supply that will protect the printers against any power failure. So if the power failure is very short, the printer will continue printing. And if the power is uh, recovered, then of course you can keep working and, and get your print uh, that it takes two days, right? But in case the power failure is uh, very long and then we don't have enough backup power, uh, then the printer will have enough time to move to the home position. This is uh, something very important that some other printers do, do not have um, because when moving to the home position, you will avoid having these small artifacts on the, on the printed part. Something that I think is also very important is maintenance. So when you want to have a high productivity printer, maintenance is one of the key elements. So in this case, we are also having a built-in uh, side tray where all the tools will be by your side. So then you can get the tools from here when you need to do any uh, maintenance operation. Something that is also included in the smart cabinet is uh, an extra storage in the bottom. So you can put there some extra hot ends, uh, filament spools, even printed parts. So having everything stored in the smart cabinet. And also the smart cabinet has wheels. So that means that when you need to perform any maintenance operation, you can turn the printer around and it will be very easy for you. And also if you want to move the printer around the facilities, then it will be very, very straightforward. Yeah, I think what you were saying about the maintenance tools is actually a very nice feature for customers. I've been to a few machine shops and assembly areas and typically they'll keep their tooling and maintenance equipment in a completely separate area. So to have the tools that are important for maintaining the printer living with the printer, I think makes life a whole lot easier. So another big application for the Epsilon is tooling and manufacturing aids. I think that this is a set of applications that's mentioned a lot, but being highly underutilized. Please write this down. I think that every company that is somehow involved with manufacturing parts or products can benefit in some way from incorporating 3D printed parts into their workflow. 
and that could be directly in the production line. You can add customized grips or adapters that fit those days' parts and swap them out with your production cycle instead of having to maintain multiple lines. In manual assembly, you can add tools for alignment that make assembly quicker for operators. In quality assurance, you can adapt QA tools, measuring fixtures, holding fixtures. In testing, you can add tools that help with the calibration process. So there's so many things you can do. You know, when I started my engineering career in the elevator industry, I was designing tools for assembly lines. And now seeing where we are today and what you can do with thanks to 3D printing, I see so many ways that it could have helped me back then. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it looks like it's a really, really interesting application. Do you have an example for your uh, previous uh, job? Uh, yes, I do. Mm -hmm. um, the one that pops out at me most, I think I was designing uh, an assembly line for these very large safety devices that go on elevators. And part of the assembly process was that you had to lower three heavy blocks in unison to calibrate the machine. And so the solution that was implemented was simple enough using a hydraulic jack, but then resetting the process took longer than the actual installation. And had I just been able to create whatever I wanted, I would have 3D printed a lever that you can lock in place, rest all the pieces on, lower it down and in one go, and completely reset it in one motion instead of having to do everything by hand, uh, and it took a lot of time. So there's, these tooling ideas are a great way to cut out costs, to reduce part and, and assembly complexity, and improve workflows. Mm -hmm. And that example would have been a perfect candidate for the Epsilon W27SC because of the build volume and the uh, materials. Yeah. And even at that time, um, you know, the, most, the most readily available materials were PLA and ABS, which I don't think would have done the job for this specific application. I probably would have printed it out of nylon because it's very durable and wear resistant, or even a composite material like carbon fiber filled nylon for the heavier loads. So things like this are a great way to cut costs and all those other things that I mentioned. Yeah, well, oh, nice example. So one of the things that you have mentioned is uh, the, the build volume, right? So for these specific applications, uh, having a, a huge volume is very interesting because you can uh, print the parts uh, all together. You don't need to split them up and then put them together again, uh, what you will do with a smaller printer. So in this case, uh, with the Epsilon W50 and Epsilon W27, uh, you have 50 liters of total volume in one and 27 in the other. So you can uh, print any manufacturing aids or, or tooling just uh, in one go. And because now we also have the smart cabinet together with the printers, it's very handy to have all the spools stored in there. And because you can now store up to eight small spools, the typical 750 grams or one kilo uh, spools, but uh, you will have also space for four, up to four uh, big spools. So those big rolls uh, uh, that is like around 2.5 kilograms. So it's like 10 kilos, 10 kilos of uh, material that you will use for printing your massive part. That's right. And also we have thick nozzle sizes up to one millimeter diameter. So that's valuable if you want to create really large parts quickly or in a situation where production line components break down and you need to be back up and running as soon as possible. You can do so in a matter of hours as opposed to days or weeks even waiting for replacements to come in. And actually that's a good example of a third common application for the Epsilon, which is end use parts. And there's different ways that companies use end use parts. Like I was saying, in a supply chain emergency, time becomes critical and you need to be back up and running as soon as possible. And so you can remove supply chain risk by creating these parts that are normally traditionally made with 3D printed parts. Or you can even implement mass customization into your parts because there's no mold or tooling costs impacted when you change the part design. Depending on the application, you could even print and use parts out of composite materials like carbon fiber filled nylon, glass fiber filled polypropylene, is some, of the, some of the materials that we have. Hmm. And these materials have additives that add or enable certain characteristics that you don't normally have when you are using the base material alone. But what kind of features does the Epsilon series have to support composite materials? Mm -hmm. So uh, in this case, I will start uh, talking about the Hotten X, the VCN Hotten X uh, provided by E3D. Um, there is a, a hardened steel uh, Hotten uh, 
Um, so this uh, Houghton has a, a, a stronger nozzle where you can get the same quality over and over again and something that you don't get if you will use uh, the normal brass nozzles that get degraded uh, very fast when printed with composite materials. Uh, the other uh, interesting uh, thing that we have here in our uh, uh, Warven series printer, Epsilon printers, is uh, the full enclosure. So for these specific materials, it's very important that we have a, a, a high temperatures for the bed and also we need to keep an environment uh, warm, so the quality of these materials uh, will get uh, perfect at all times. Uh, but it's also uh, interesting to mention that uh, now that we have the full enclosure, we also have a nice feature that is the safety pause. So whenever you open uh, the door, the printer will stop, preventing the operator to uh, get some harms if they are moving uh, or placing the hands uh, when uh, there are moving parts inside of the printer. And one important thing is when moving to these composite materials and sometimes for other engineering grade materials is that uh, we need to keep the operator always healthy and safe. And because these materials sometimes emit fumes or ultrafine particles or volatile organic compounds, we need to filter out those by using HEPA and carbon filter. That's right. And so here we've just discussed three different applications for the Epsilon series. Low volume production, tooling and manufacturing aids, and end-use parts. And with these three applications, I think we've discussed every feature that there is to know about the Epsilon series, which really goes to show how well the Epsilon series has been designed for these applications. But that doesn't mean that these are the only applications you can pursue with Epsilon. There is much more, and companies come up with new ones every week. Yeah, I will say that the Epsilon series provide a set, a variety set of tools to help the customers to get what they need. That's right. And so I think we've discussed everything that there is to discuss. If you want to find out more information, you can visit our website at bcn3d.com. Or if you already own some of our products, you can find more useful support information in our knowledge base. Thank you all for watching. I think we've really enjoyed talking about this topic, and we hope you've enjoyed learning about it.